In this video, I'll show you the number one investing strategy, which on a whole will make the most people the most amount of money. I know that was a loaded sentence, so hear me out. This investing strategy will work for 90% of investors, and it will work better than hiring a financial advisor, day trading, or picking and choosing the companies that you like. So if you have the question, I have X amount of dollars, what should I do to invest it? Then make sure to watch this video all the way through for a full analysis about this investment strategy and also why it might make you a lot of money. I'll also go through four top stocks that you can buy in 2020 for long-term growth. Okay, first of all, what is the strategy? The strategy itself is called index fund investing. And let me tell you why it's the best investment strategy. The S&P 500 has gained an average of about 10 percent over the last almost 100 years. Adjusted for inflation, it's about 7%. Take a look at this chart showing the gains and losses of the S&P 500 for the last few decades. You can see that a majority of the bars are positive while only a few are negative. This means that on average, the S&P 500 goes up on a yearly basis. Now, obviously past performance does not guarantee future performance, but I do think that it is one of the best indicators that an investor can use in order to see how much money they should expect to make in the future. And it's something that I definitely look at when trying to decide where I want to put my money. So here's the definition of an index fund. An index fund tracks the performance of a particular market index. For example, the S&P 500. Let's say you want to invest in the top 500 companies in the US. Obviously, that might be kind of impossible because the cost to acquire one share of each of these 500 companies can be extremely expensive. Well, index funds allow you to buy one share of this index fund and it will replicate buying a tiny fractional share of each of these 500 companies. You're investing in this fund and this fund is subsequently investing in these companies. That's kind of how the whole structure of an ETF works. So yes, in a way, it is the lazy way to invest, but it's also the smart way to invest. Warren Buffett is a huge believer in index funds and he says that it's one of the smartest and most practical ways to invest in the stock market. Right now, index funds are getting very popular. In the last year, the amount of money that's actually invested in these passive index funds has exceeded exceeded the amount of money invested in actively managed funds. Why? Well, everyone's talking about it. Everyone on YouTube's talking about it. All these blogs are talking about it. And even the news is covering index funds. I mean, index funds aren't a new thing. They've been around for many years, but recently the popularity of them has just exploded. Second, it's because index funds don't require you to be an expert when investing in stocks. If you don't follow the market closely or you don't follow individual companies and know how to analyze them, you're likely better off just investing in the market as a whole. Even professionals have a difficult time beating the market. Some can beat the market over a couple of years, but if you stretch that out to 5, 10, 20 years, it becomes extremely, extremely difficult to actually beat the market, and very few people do so. Third, you won't lose any money to any high fees. When you pay someone to invest your money for you, they're going to take a sizable percent of the funds that they're managing in order to compensate them for their time. On average, these actively managed funds take about 0.75% per year. So let's say that you have $10,000 invested with someone. They'll probably take around $75 in fees per year. It doesn't seem like a lot at first, but those fees compound with time and really add up. They also take a huge chunk out of what your earnings are. Because if you compare it to how much money they're making you, let's say they're making you 10% per year, which would be very good. That 0.75% is based on your whole portfolio amount. So in reality, they're taking 7.5% of your gains per year. Putting it in that type of perspective really shows how much money they're taking. But on average, index funds have an average expense ratio of just 0.08%, meaning that they are almost 10 times cheaper to own. Now that I've gone through the benefits of the index fund investment strategy, let's go over four top ETF stocks that you can actually buy today. Number one is the SPDF S&P 500 ETF, also known as SPY. SPY is one of the most heavily traded ETFs on the market. And it was formed in 1993 as the first publicly listed ETF in the United States. Currently, it's trading at $291.40 per share. Its 52-week low is $218.26, and its 52-week high is $339.08. Right now, it has a dividend yield of 1.99%, and its year-to-date return is negative 8.58%. Now, everything that we talk about on this list will have a negative return just due to the pandemic. But hey, we are investing in these ETFs in the long run. So actually right now may be a good time 
attempt to buy it. If we zoom out to the six month chart, you can see that yes, in February, it started to really drop down, but since then it's recovered back into the high 200s. Let's take a look at the performance numbers. So like I said, it's year to date return is negative 8.58%. But if we take a look at the long term, the 10 year return, you can see that right now it is 11.59%. If we take a look at the annual total return history, you can see that a majority of the years are green and just a few are red. For example, 2019 saw an astonishing 31.29% increase in value. Most of the S&P 500 ETFs will have similar sector weightings. And you can see that for SPY, uh, a majority of their stuff is in healthcare, communication services, technology, and financial services. Its current price to earnings ratio is 19.67, and it has a price to book value ratio of 3.01. If we look at their top 10 holdings, which account for 26.33% of their assets, you can see there are companies like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, Johnson Johnson, Berkshire Hathaway, and Visa. Currently, they do have 505 selected stocks in 24 different industries. Probably the most important thing that you wanna look at is SPY's expense ratio. And right now their expense ratio is 0.0945%. SPY as a whole is a very liquid fund. It has the most short-term interest as a percent of assets of any S&P 500 ETF. It is also one of the most frequently traded ETFs out there. Traders like this fund because it tracks the S&P 500 in real time. So it may be a more accurate representation of the S&P 500 on a day-to-day -day basis. Next up on my list, is VOO, and this is Vanguard's own S&P 500 index fund ETF. It was started in 2010, so this is a newer index fund that was started by Vanguard as its main S&P 500 index fund. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I love talking about VOO as it is my favorite ETF of all time. Currently, VOO is trading for $267.46. Its 52-week low is $200.55, and its 52-week high is $311.59. Year to date, their returns are negative 8.7%. And right now the dividend yield on VOO is 1.98%. If we zoom out on the six month chart, you can see that just like SPY, this thing has gone down dramatically since mid February, but since then it has gone up to the mid 200s. Let's take a quick look at the performance. And as I said before, their year to date return is negative 8.7%. But if we look at their five year return, you can see that it is 9.08%. If we take a look at their annual total return history, you can see that yes, most of these bars are green and it's actually only lost money in 2018 and likely of course, 2020. This fund was made after 2008, so we won't see any red bars there. Let's take a look at their portfolio and we can see that 99.3% uh, of their portfolio is actually in stocks. It's going to have pretty much the same sector weightings as SPY. So we can see that's heavily focused in the consumer cyclical, financial services, healthcare, communication services, and technology sectors. Its current price to earnings ratio is 17.91, and its current price to book ratio is 2.68. The top 10 holdings are very similar to SPY, so I'm just not gonna really go through them, but you can take a look here. The best thing about VOO is its extremely low expense ratio, and this is why I recommend it to everyone out there. Right now, its current expense ratio ratio is just 0.03%. So for every $10,000 you have invested, you're only spending $3 in fees every year. VOO is more long-term than SPY, and that's because it's less liquid. The low expense ratio makes it very attractive to hold for long periods of time. So if you hold it for 30 years, you're gonna pay very little in fees. Warren Buffett has actually personally recommended this fund, and that's due to its accuracy, long-term nature, as well as its extremely low fees. Number three on my list is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. ETF. This fund is particularly great for investors who like dividend stocks. This is because it focuses on large companies that pay a sizable and stable dividend. This way you can make money by holding this ETF and just getting paid through dividends instead of relying on growth and selling your shares. I mean, the other index funds are also gonna pay out dividends, but this one is gonna have a higher dividend yield. SCHD tracks the Dow Jones US Dividend 100 Index, which is made up of 100 companies with extremely high dividend yields. These companies have have a lot of financial strength and their balance sheets prove it. So right now, SCHD is trading at $49.76 per share. Its 52-week low is $38.83, 
and its 52 week high is $59.56. Currently, the dividend yield on this ETF is 3.58%. And if we look at its year to date returns, we can see that it's negative 11.45%. So it's actually gone down a bit more than the other ETFs. SCHD's expense ratio is actually quite good at 0.06%. If we take a look at the six month chart, we can see that you know the same drop in mid February, but since then it's bounced back quite a bit. For its performance, like I said earlier, its year to date performance is negative 11.45%. But if we look at the five year performance, we can see that the average return is 8.23%. Its annual total return history also shows that yes, most years it is green with the exception of 2018. For its portfolio composition, we can see that 99.96% are invested in stocks and its sector ratings, most things are in the consumer cyclical, financial services, consumer defensive, healthcare, industrials, and technology sectors. Its current price to earnings ratio is 16.16 and its current price to book ratio is 3.05. Its top 10 holdings, which account for 44.95% of its holdings, include Home Depot, Exxon, Intel, Bristol Myers, Pfizer, PepsiCo, International Business Machines Corp, Verizon, Texas Instruments, and Coca-Cola. These are more like your blue chip companies that have paid out stable dividends throughout the years. Okay, last up on my list is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund ETF. This one is a little bit different because it invests in small, mid, and large cap companies. This means that a lot of companies in this fund are not in the S&P 500. So currently, VTI is trading at $141.16, with a 52-week low of $109.49, and a 52-week high of $172.56. Its current dividend yield is 1.88% and its year-to-date returns are negative 11.48%. Best thing about this one is also its really low expense ratio of just 0.03%. If we zoom out on the chart, you can see that there was a dramatic drop in mid-February and since then it's also recovered back to the mid-100s. Performance-wise, like I said before, this one's been hit hard and its total year-to-date return is negative 11.48%. But if we look at the 10-year, we can see that it's made on average 11.28% per year. Looking at the annual total return history, you can see that yes, most are green like always, with the exception of 2018, 2008, and it's actually cut off on here, but 2002. Its current price to earnings ratio is 17.36, and its current price to book ratio is 2.48. Very similar sector weightings as the other ETFs on this list. And its top 10 holdings, which make up 21.31% of its total assets, include companies like Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Facebook, Alphabet, and a lot more. These are very similar to the S&P 500 top holdings, but that's just because these companies are so big that they're going to make a majority of any type of index fund. If we take a look at the longer list of companies, you'll see a ton of these small and mid-sized companies that aren't included in the S&P 500 index funds. So guys, those are four of the best ETFs that you can buy on the market today. Since buying one share of an ETF gives you an interest in many different companies, this is seen as a diversified investment and is traditionally much safer than investing in individual companies. Now, I'm not recommending that you only buy ETFs as part of your portfolio. Only you know what's best and what investment style fits your needs. I'll kind of give you guys a summary of my current allocation of investments just to give you guys an example of how I invest. So right now, about 60% of my total stock investments are in index funds and ETFs like these. The other 40% is invested in individual companies. I am in general a bit more of a risky person, so I do like to buy individual companies that I believe in. This is riskier, but with anything that's more risky, there is more potential growth to be had. If I get lucky and these companies that I invest in do well, then likely I will see over a 10% return on my investment. If not, I very well could lose money. It's all about risk tolerance and how much you think you know about the stock market. The more you know, the riskier you are, and also the more confident you are, the less you can put into index funds. The less you know and the less time you wanna spend on stuff like this means more of your money should actually be put into index funds. So come up with a plan and start investing this year, you guys. I mean, I know a lot of you guys have already started investing, but if you have not, now can be a really good time to start. I'm not saying dump all your money into the stock market right now. That might be kind of risky actually, but you can always buy in increments and whenever you do get some spare cash to invest, put them into an index fund like the ones I mentioned in this video. You can always change your allocations as your investment strategies change or if you want to have more or less risk. The keys to get started, open up a brokerage account and make your first deposit. In the long run, I know you will be thankful that you opened up an account and started investing when you did. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I really hope that you learned something as well. If you have not already, make sure to open a Webull account and get your one free stock worth up to $1,400. And for all investing, I just want to
to make sure that you guys do your own due diligence, research on your own to see what works for you. And while I try to base most of my videos on facts, the thing is a lot of it is still personal opinion. Use my videos as a starting point and do your own research. So guys, if you like this video, first make sure to share it with a friend and also like and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. I make a ton of videos about investing, personal finance, and entrepreneurship. So that's it for today. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.